let's face it, you really ought to be testing your landing pages. And odds are, you're probably not doing it right. Landing page testing can improve your business much better than any audience or bidding model or next Facebook hack or whatever else might ever do. And it'll do so in a incredibly sustainable way. Problem is, an overwhelming number of marketers don't do this right. And we're going to fix that right now because you deserve it. Now, before we get too deep into focusing on the optimization of our landing page, we need to understand one primary necessity, stability, volume, and quality of our traffic, especially when doing this with Facebook ads. If you are using a lot of different types of audiences and different ads and different campaigns with different bidding models, understand that you've got a lot of different type of customers and traffic coming to your store. So you might optimize for the traffic that came in that week, but as soon as you turn that audience off or you shift to new ads, well, that landing page you optimized for, the traffic it was optimized to convert well against, it's gone. So you're gonna be constantly chasing yourself in a circle, which is yet another reason why audiences on Facebook are a complete waste of time. Now, when we focus on getting this volume and quality more efficiently, and stabilizing the front end, we can really work on these after-the-click endeavors that dramatically scale our business with confidence. And that is what we're trying to do more than anything else. So what's the best way to test your landing pages? Well, if you are ever going to test the landing pages, you should never do it without routing your traffic after the click. It is an extremely bad idea to set up individual ads, to go to separate landing pages, to see which landing page does best. Let's dive into it. So why is testing your ads with anything other than after the click routing a really bad idea? Well, let's dive into a couple of reasons. First, we cannot expect any new ad to perform the same as an old ad would do, even if it's identical, because each ad has its own life cycle. We're talking about each post ID. And that life cycle creates a curated audience around that specific post ID. That's really important. Second, if we run an identical version of the ad to a new landing page, we're also creating an overlap in the auction with the identical creatives that are going to other landing pages with different estimated action rates. That means the new ad won't have a clean read of the data at all to begin with. Third, if the new ad actually does do better, we won't know if it's because of the landing page or the impact of machine learning or impression inventory, just dumb luck. And let's say that that landing page is better. Does, does that mean we now have to go back and recreate every single ad so we make a version that goes to that new landing page? I mean, first off, that's incredibly unrealistic. It's also not scalable. And it's tremendously volatile to our status quo. When you're trying to scale literally any brand, Probably the easiest lever to address is LTV. So let's get into the easiest ways to improve LTV with confidence. Now remember, LTV, lifetime value is vital. Lifetime value from your customer is the lifeblood of the growth of your business. If people buy from you only ever once, it'll be damn near impossible for you to be able to build your business because you're a product, not a brand. You're not getting future cash flow. You're a salesman trying to make money today. LTV is infinitely more important than ROAS. Let me tell you why. So what is the process for testing landing pages? Well, when we test landing pages by routing the traffic after the click using a tool like Google Optimize or Optimizely, because again, we're trying to have meaningful tests. We're not running ads to different landing pages because that's completely not scalable, a tailable read on data and completely inactionable. And even if we are winning, that means we have to change everything just to catch up. And that's a completely unrealistic expectation. We have to have a process. And we need to have a benchmark bounce rate and conversion rate for our primary landing page. With each test that we run, we need to start at a small percentage. And that is the same percentage we start with for every test. And then we compare the metrics against the benchmark. Now this is really key because it's not just understanding how that new landing page does against the control. 
but it also lets us know on test three, on test 10, how does it compare to previous tests? That's tremendously important. Now, I often start with a five or 10% of traffic going to the new landing page. And that means that it gets a meaningful amount so I can learn sooner than later. But also if it's terrible, it doesn't completely tank our performance. Now when doing this, if my conversion rate is at least as good or better with my five or 10% distribution that I'm using on after the click routing, because remember, we're not running ads to different landing pages to test landing pages because that is objectively a terrible idea. If it holds, I will double my percentage. And if my conversion rate continues to be good or better, then I will go as high as 50% of traffic to the new landing page. Before moving to effectively 100% of a new landing page, and then I'll start my next test immediately because I should always be testing because we can always get better. When we're testing landing pages, the most important thing we really need to understand outside obviously of the mechanics is what is actually a win and, and then what? But when we're testing a landing page, we have to clearly define the winners and put them into context. A winning landing page needs to have a conversion rate that is significantly better than the control. In my opinion, anything less than 10% better isn't a win. If you get two or 3% wins and you get them constantly, you might over the course of six months or a year get eight or 9% better. And, and that's great. But you could have kept testing and in six months gotten 10% better with one change. And as you make those changes, think about all the downstream impacts of testing and time and money and just straight up dev work that had to go into each one of these marginal changes that might very well have done with seasonality or the effectiveness of the ads as much as they had anything to do with the landing page. When we are testing landing pages, remember, we're using routing after the click. For us to declare a true winner and move 100% of our traffic to the new landing page, we need that winner to have a double digit percentage increase in efficiency of the conversion rate over the control. We need that much. For instance, a 2% becomes a 2.2%. That's a 10% lift. When we're testing landing pages, if we only look at the traffic coming from Facebook, we have to understand that it by no means reflects all the traffic that we get. So any win in a conversion rate of traffic that is Facebook only could very well be a detriment to the conversion rate of traffic that comes via email or search or organic. Because just having a really good alignment with your Facebook ad doesn't mean that that has anything to do with how your email is written. I mean, it should, but that's... Uh, nice to have. I can't tell you how many times somebody made this great Facebook ad to landing page funnel and it crushed inside of Facebook and we made it go everywhere and it tanked the whole site because it completely ruined the SEO search and email effectiveness of the entire campaign because we were testing before the click and I will never do that again and neither should you. When we're testing landing pages, Without a double digit percentage increase in conversion rate between our test and our control, we will ultimately create very high levels of work or very minimal levels of impact that might ultimately result in a net loss for our business at scale. For instance, how much money, time, and resources will it take to implement a 2% better landing page that you tested only with Facebook ads? when Facebook is responsible for 60% of your traffic. What if that tanks everything else? What if that takes a month to do? What if that costs $10,000? These things, some of that timeline, some of that money might be different for you, but if it works on one landing page, why not apply it to everything else? So any small win has a massive implication on our entire website. If we get two or three wins that help by 2%, but we don't get a 10% lift, did we really win? If we spend six months, seven months, eight months, repeating two, 3% wins and get to a five or 6% change, 
great. We could have spent that entire time dedicating ourselves to a 10% win, which would have objectively been twice as good. Once we have the winner with our landing page, our next step should be to implement that change across every other landing page on our site so that we can scale the impact of that win. If all of your landing pages look and feel different because they're the winners of very one-off single tests designed to isolate and solve individual problems, what you're gonna end up with is a highly disjointed user experience that lacks any continuity. You're not force multiplying wins, you are chasing isolated places. Again, you're being a hunter. That is a great win in this one little scope. But we don't care about that. That's like getting an audience to be 5% better. If it's one of 100, who cares? It doesn't mean anything. Congratulations, you did a good job. It has no impact on the business, other than it's gonna be really costly to implement. Focus on the big wins, or you can chase small money. That's a choice that ultimately is only up to you to make. My suggestion, if you really wanna grow your business, Stop trying to focus on the pebbles because you're never going to move the mountains and you deserve better.